of course, in a way, those um, accidents reignite the debate about the value of science and engineering at the This is CERN, the nuclear research laboratory on the border of France and Switzerland. It features the most powerful particle accelerator on Earth, the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. What does it do? Well, it accelerates and collides particles at 99.99% the speed of light. When you hear the words particle accelerator, the first thing you probably think of is the Large Hadron Collider. I mean, it is the most powerful atom smashing machine on the planet. It's very famous. It's charged with unpacking the fundamental mysteries of our universe. No big deal. Really, what they are trying to do at CERN is to physically break at a quantum level, at a quantum scale, the barrier that exists, which is known as the strong force or the nuclear bond between quantum particles. So they are physically trying to break open or doorway which, between parallel dimensions. On the 10th of September last year, we turned the machine on for the first time, and this picture was taken by Atlas. It caused immense celebration in the control room. It's a picture of the first beam particle going all the way around the LHC, colliding with a piece of the LHC deliberately, and showering particles into the detector. In other words, when we saw that picture on September 10th, we knew the machine worked, which is a great triumph. At the LHC, particles make 11,000 laps every second for about 20 minutes until they reach their optimum energy level, and then they point them at each other so they can collide. That's really fast. The total energy of two protons colliding in the LHC is 14 tera electron volts and reproduces similar states to moments after the Big Bang. About a week later, we had a problem with the machine related actually to these bits of wire here, these gold wires. Um, this was the result. <laughs> now, that's more impressive when you consider those magnets weigh over 20 tons and they moved about a foot. Particle track it's with those already circulating. One vacuum pipe has injected into it protons which will circulate clockwise and the other protons which will circulate anti-clockwise. The counter-rotating beams cross over in the four detector caverns where they can be made to collide. About a week later, we had a problem with the machine. A steering magnet finally brings them to a collision course. In one of the joins between over 9,000 magnets in LHC, uh, there was a manufacturing defect, so the wire heated up slightly, and its 13,000 amps suddenly encountered electrical resistance. So we damaged about 50 of the magnets. We had to take them out, which we did. We've reconditioned them all, fixed them. They're all on their way back underground now. By the end of March, the LHC will be intact again. We will switch it on, and we expect to take data in June or July. Scientists at CERN revealed today that the Large Hadron Collider accidentally created a wormhole to a mirror universe. Wormhole to a mirror universe. This was completely unexpected, one of the scientists stated. There was some speculation that the LHC might unravel the fabric of space-time and destroy the universe, but most of us felt certain that the destruction would be more localised, most likely limited to our solar system, or possibly just the Earth itself. No one anticipated that it would open a portal to a bizarre parallel dimension. This has totally screwed up the office pool. Scientists from the mirror universe, who are assisting our scientists in trying to shut down the LHC, are denying rumours that their universe is some kind of evil alternate reality to our own. It's hardly fair to label our universe as evil, said Mr. Susan, ruler of the Mirror Universe, during the joint press conference held this morning. Protesters outside of CERN have already added invasion from Mirror Universe to the long list of dangers they believe the LHC poses. You have to keep a close watch on these scientist types, warned one protester. One minute they're opening up gateways to other dimensions, and the next thing you know, they're doing something really dangerous, like bouncing Wanderflonium. Both sets of scientists insist that their LHC is perfectly safe, or at least as safe as a 27-kilometer super collider capable of punching a hole in reality can be. Everyone can rest assured that we're all working together to shut down the LHC as soon as possible, the Mirror Universe scientist stated, even though the wormhole is absolutely stable and poses no danger whatsoever. In a way, those um, accidents reignite the debate about the value of science and engineering at the edge. Um, it's easy to refute, I think, that the fact that it's so difficult, the fact that we're overreaching is the value of things like the LHC. And these are just some of the problems particle accelerators are tackling. But again, because this is driven by a spiritual agenda and spiritual forces, specifically Lucifer, but by their own words, they want to open a doorway. They want to open a gateway or a portal to other dimensions. And those are their own words. I guess that begs the question, a doorway to what? They are physically trying to break open a doorway between parallel dimensions. Particle tracks from these collisions will be analyzed by computers connected to the detectors. And it's hoped these tracks will give a new insight into the very birth of our universe. Yeah, so the Mandela effect may come. Sure. People are talking about the Bible changing and uh, movies changing and, and products changing. Uh, are these people just, I mean, is it basically a lack of memory or is it in fact happening? It is in fact happening. Um, the physical changes do not exist. I'm going to be very specific. The physical changes do not exist in a physical manifestation. In other words, the words printed on the page have not changed. The words that are spoken in a video, like in Star Wars, have not changed. The labels on the product have not changed. What has changed is art, psychology. This is a psychological operation. This is a form of mass hypnosis. Because one of the foundational points, one of the benchmarks of developing the AI-1 computers by D-Wave, 
was to study human behavior, produce mathematical algorithms to model human behavior, and then to be able to predict human behavior. And now, with the advent of the Mandela effect now testing, we are seeing the manipulation of human behavior, utilizing quantum computers that are accessing parallel dimensions. When I say that they're extracting resources, what they're doing is they are allowing changes to happen on a mass scale. They are allowing changes to our memories to take place. They are actually manipulating us. This sounds far fetched. You have to do the research into the quantum computer to understand what I'm saying. But in a nutshell, through what is known as the sentient world simulation, the SWS, the computers generate the digital matrix, the simulation every person on the planet has a node, and they've given every node an avatar. And every person is connected to the sentient world simulation. And because we're connected to it, and it is a matrix that is being run, a program that is being run by quantum computers, they can input whatever stimuli into our psyche that they choose. And therefore, the Mandela effect is just the tip of the iceberg. It is a test. It is a beta test for the B system and grand deception. What we are seeing is only the leading edge of it. But what we're talking about here is mass mind control. If you look at the main aspects or the main realization or awareness by people of the Mandela effect, if you go back to 2007, along with the increasing manifestations of the Mandela effect. So this is a pebble in the pond scenario. They're dropping stimuli into the matrix because they know, they predict how people are going to respond. But it's a test. It's a further testing of how people respond to these changes in the environment. They do that because they are trying to enhance the algorithms for the machine learning. This all ties into the B system. This all ties into the process of having a single system that will control everyone psychologically. In scripture, it's controlling buying and selling, but it goes beyond that. This is about actually changing our minds so that we are controlled by the matrix, the SWS. And you said this started in 2007. We have free will, but that can be manipulated. How our universe has evolved, what governs its behavior today, and where it's going in the future. Even though the LHC is the biggest, it definitely isn't the only particle accelerator out there. In fact, you probably live not too far from one. There are over 30,000 particle accelerators all over the world. 30,000. Some of the most ubiquitous accelerators aren't cyclical ones like the Large Hadron Collider, but instead they're linear. These are called Linax, or linear accelerators. The longest Linac in the world is at the Slack. It's buried underground. If you've ever driven on a section of Highway 280 in California, you've driven right over it. What? I know. I don't know whether this got the biggest cheer or this when someone went onto Google and saw the front page. It was like that. It means we made cultural impact as well as scientific impact. And about a week later, we had a problem with the machine. I'll leave the final word to um, an English scientist that said this, nothing is so dangerous to the progress of the human mind than to assume that our views of science are ultimate, that there are no mysteries in nature, that our triumphs are complete, and that there are no new worlds to conquer. Thank you.